Well, U.S. debt topping over $34 trillion for the first time ever. This coming as a deadline looms for Congress to reach a deal in order to avert a government shutdown. Yahoo Finance reporter Rick Newman is here. And Rick, when you take into account the skyrocketing national debt that we have, pretty uh, disappointing, uh, concerning here at this point, yet voters don't seem to care. Well, voters care in theory. Uh, polls say that if you ask voters, is, is the national debt too high? Yes, it's too high. And just qualitatively, I mean, they sure complain about it when they write to me uh, if I'm doing something on, on a related topic. But what voters don't want is the painful choices that would come with the solution. I mean, getting out of this problem means uh, you either have to raise taxes or cut spending and not cut spending by trivial mat, you know, numbers such as uh, you know, cancel some art spending or something like that. You have to you have to take on the big programs where the money is, and that is Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and defense. And so, if you say to just about any voter, "How do you feel about cutting Social Security?" No way, don't do that. What about cutting Medicare for seniors or health care for poor people? Nah, we don't think that's a great idea either. What about raising taxes? Well. Fine if you raise somebody else's taxes, just don't raise my taxes. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the ability of the United States to borrow uh, seemingly endlessly uh, has gotten us into this problem. So it's no surprise at all we hit $34 trillion. We're going to hit $35 trillion probably later this year. And by the time the next president is out of office, we're going to hit $40 trillion in, uh, in, in national debt. So, Rick, given all this and given the fact that we do have a deadline coming up here in, what, less than two weeks at this point, that the government could potentially shut down if a deal is not reached on future funding, on future spending, what's your best guess, I guess, at this point, just in terms of where talks stand and how likely we are to get some sort of deal before that first deadline? We don't really seem any closer than we have been. Um, going back to uh, when Republicans fired uh, Kevin McCarthy as their speaker, Kevin McCarthy has now left Congress. He's he's not even around on Capitol Hill anymore. Um, and and there, there's no evidence that we've gotten any closer toward any kind of deal. So, I mean, Republicans are basically demanding these um, fairly sharp uh, spending cuts that Democrats who control the Senate are unlikely to agree with. So, I mean, in normal in normal times, there would just be a compromise. You know, the, the House Republicans would get some of the cuts they want and they would not get other things they want. And the Democrats who control the Senate would get some of the things they want, such as more funding for uh, Ukraine, for the war there, where that funding has run out. Um, it, it, it's just an open question with uh, basically in the House, you have a fairly small number of the most extreme conservative Republicans who seem to con have control of the party. Uh, and this new speaker, Mike Johnson, comes from that wing of the party. So it's it's going to be quite interesting to see how this all plays out. I mean, I don't think there's really a template for this. I mean, a lot of times we know how Congress comes together and make it to make a deal, but not when an extreme faction of one party seems to control the whole party. So uh, I'm very interested to see how Republicans get out of this cul-de-sac. Yeah, of course. And then, Rick, there's also the slight issue that Congress is only going to be in session for, what, just over a week before this deadline, too? So the fact that they're so far apart, the fact that there is so much disagreement with the, within the Republican Party in the House doesn't make it too likely. But we'll see. Maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. Rick Newman, thanks so much. See ya.